everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm in Santiago, Chile with Christian, and we're going to be talking all about LEGO in Latin America and what it's like to be a LEGO fan in Latin America, as well as taking a look at some of Christian's fantastic builds that he's done here based on real buildings in Santiago. So I thank you so much for inviting us over to, to have this chat and take a look at some of your buildings. If you want to give kind of an introduction real quick about yourself and kind of what you do with LEGO here in Chile. Sure. Thank you, Josh. Uh, well, hello, my name is Christian Breinbauer, or Christian Breckbauer. Uh, <clears throat> I am from Chile Lug, and I also run Art Bricks, which, uh, which is a YouTube channel for the Spanish-speaking AFL. And I also uh, a frequent invite in Kevin Hinkle's um, uh, Backlog, Backlog Building, building show <laughs> every, <laughs> every other Friday, so go check that too. And today we're going to talk about uh, some of my mocks and what it is to be an AFL in Latin America. Well, here you can see uh, 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 my two largest builds, which are the central post office building here in Santiago, which is right, right next to the National Museum of History, which used to be the Royal Audience building back in the colony. So they're very uh, important buildings here in the city and they're in the main plaza down in, uh, in downtown in the city. Uh, it took me a while to build them. Uh, I just like to take a picture and build and rebuild until I, I get it. So it took me about a year each, each of the builds. During our time here in Santiago, we had the chance to go with you to the square and see these buildings in real life. And they are really beautiful, so many great details. And you've captured a lot of those uh, really well here. So let's start with the, the white building here. Talk about some of that because there's so many small pieces here that make up certainly like the facade in the front of this building. Yep. Uh, I, uh, this this was the second large build, uh, first build the other one. Um, I really enjoyed doing all the details because I, I love when you get to play with, I don't know, to make all these uh, decorations, I used the croissant, some cow horns, um, maybe some alien guns uh, down there. So th I think that's one of the beauty of LEGO, to just pick the pieces and make something else. Uh, and to add the details in this kind of building, it's awesome. And then <clears throat> certainly what contrasts very nicely and stands out is the blue back there as well on, on the background there. And there's some interesting kind of slopes back there. Yep. Yep. Uh, that actually... Uh, when I was building this, it took me a pause because I finished like uh, up to this level and then I didn't know actually how to go upwards to do uh, because uh, the actual uh, ceiling, it's like a dome or something. So I think this was the best way I could uh, get around the being uh, that it, I wanted to in, in Earth Blue that you don't have that much many uh, different pieces. So I think it, it worked pretty well. Yeah, it's kind of a nice, uh, a very nice gentle slope there. So one thing that that also stands out always with buildings like this is the windows and how you're able to incorporate that. Like here, I noticed, did you even kind of cut off part of the section there to kind of create the exact window effect from the real building? Um, well, I didn't cut it off. This is like a regular door that I just uh, hide uh, half of it uh, on each side. Right. So, so you were just hidden. Yeah. You only get to see half the. Um, have the door to get the window uh, decoration. And also uh, over here, I, I try to do some drapes and stuff and try to add some interior uh, details too. So do you do much interiors within these buildings then? Do you kind of put any rooms or anything like that? Or does it pretty much just kind of create the, the outside of the building? No, just the outside. Yeah, because uh, this is so large to move around that it, you can uh, yeah, you can actually play with it. So there's no point of having interiors. And when you display them, you uh, you wouldn't be like taking out the the outer part to show the interior. So you either do once or or, <laughs> or the other, but you can't do both. Right, it's a lot of work to be taking it all yeah. apart like that. So we'll move over to the next building then, which in in real life is right next to door to this one, right? Yep. They're right next to each other. Yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it was in storage, so some of the bricks are a bit loose, but it's mainly uh, that uh, that's the building. <clears throat> um, uh, this was, uh, I think it's much simpler in the way that it used diff uh, much less uh, much less variety of, of bricks because it was the first time I built it uh, so big. But I uh, still, I think I got some interesting details, like when I used the binoculars here um, to do the, like, um, how do you a call balcony, it? Sort a balcony, of? right? And I don't know. It, it was fun. Yeah. It was my first try, and I think I, I did pretty well. 
Now, something you captured here, this isn't actually a mistake, but if, if people are watching, you notice that it's kind of an offset building. Like, the, the tower in the middle isn't actually directly in the middle, but that's how the real building looks, right? Yep. Well, back in the colony, uh, it did have, like, four aisles each uh, on each side. It was a symmetrical building, but there was uh, a fire or an earthquake, I, I don't remember exactly uh, what, that they... Uh, lost some of the buildings, so they just re, uh, re uh, constructed like that. So right now, as it stands, it's four windows on the one side and th only three on the other. Chile does have earthquakes every once in a while. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> We're known for that, but it's part of the country. <laughs> and then as we move up the tower here, what are some of the, the features here? You kind of got that like, almost stacked uh, wedding cake effect there as you move up to the Black Dome. Yeah, well, uh, for storage purposes, I divided it, uh, as you said, like a wedding cake. So you can, each floor, take it out like uh, modular buildings uh, from the Creator Expert line. So it's easier to uh, put away and uh, keep in storage. As you walk around Santiago, being that you live here, are, are you always looking for more inspiration for Lego build and kind of looking at interesting buildings? As, as we've been visiting the city, there's so many cool styles of architecture on display, so many neat buildings. So is that something you're kind of drawing inspiration from? Yep, I like uh, I like doing that, and it's uh, I think it's it's uh, a great opportunity because um, I don't know if you want to build uh, um, Notre Dame Cathedral, you have all these French Eiffels that already are working on that. That's what's the point that over here in Chile we start doing that, or I don't know the Capitol building or some other landmark from our country. We should start building from our own country because nobody else is going to do that. So. I think it's uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, to do that. And on our trip, uh, I saw what probably will be my next mock. So hopefully next time we meet, <laughs> it will be finished and uh, we can show it. Or I can shoot a video and send it to you too. <laughs> what are, are, are there any styles of architecture that maybe Chile or even surrounding countries in, uh, in Latin America uh, maybe kind of specialize in or have something unique that you feel kind of could be good inspiration for A-Falls and create some good Lego builds out of? Well, uh, here in Chile, uh, we were a Spanish colony, so there's uh, a unique style there that you can see throughout uh, the whole Latin America. In other parts of the continent, you can, uh, of course, see like uh, Incan uh, and constructions or Maya culture uh, over in Mexico. So they also have some unique builds that will, be, uh, will make great mocks and they should get inspired and do so. Yeah, so there's, there's so much great inspiration there. But those two buildings are fantastic. I also wanted to talk about these smaller builds you have in front of here. I think John was just showing those. So take us through what each of these uh, depict. Okay, well, uh, this first two, uh, sometimes I like building some small just just for the fun, yeah. which because it's much easier than just <laughs> ordering 3,000 bricks from Bricklink. But uh, these are some uh, cartoon classics from uh, Masters of the Universe. We have the Grayskull Castle. And the thunder, uh, the thunder, the cats layer from the thunder cats. So I like the, this the size, the mini modular size. Uh, you build over an eight by eight plate, so it's a pretty uh, comfortable space to build, and it's challenging at the same time because you have to use the small bricks with lots of details to just uh, get the um, what you uh, you want to build. And then what are these? You got some Brickhead style characters. Yep. Um, this is from a famous cartoon character from a Chilean uh, cartoon uh, or comic book that it's well known throughout Latin America, which is Condorito, uh, that is a Condor Man. And with his nephew, Cone, and his best friend, uh, Huevo Duro, which is Hard Boiled Egg. <laughs> <laughs> So this this so, is some highbrow uh, entertainment here, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, so so I just uh, built those for fun once and and kept them built because uh, uh, they turned out pretty 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 nice. I can show you the actual character so you can see if they uh, they look fine or not. Yeah, no, I think we were saw saw some photos earlier as we walked around the city, some depictions of them, and you captured them well. So I'm sure any of our Latin American fans watching might recognize this if you've seen the show. Is it mostly watched by kids? Um, uh, it's not a. Uh, it's more like a comic book thing. Okay. So uh, yeah, like um, I don't know, like funny. Um, it's I don't know, like Hitchcliffe or Garfield or whatever. It's uh, something like that. And there was a movie, but the movie didn't did, uh, uh, didn't do so great. So it's mainly the the comic books. 
Now you've just got some good Lego inspiration from yep. the characters there. But I love how you take so much inspiration from the buildings and uh, the cartoons, entertainment, everything here uh, in Chile. So so that's really fantastic. So, so now we'll uh, stop and then go over and start chatting more about uh, what it's like to be a Lego fan in Latin America. So now we're sitting here on Christian's comfy couch. Uh, I think this will be a great conversation and really open a lot of people's eyes to, to what Lego is like here in Latin America. So the first question I wanted to ask Christian is something that uh, is I think a big barrier to entry for a lot of people in the Lego community, and that's the price of Lego in Latin America. So talk about kind of what that's like compared to maybe uh, prices in the U.S. and kind of some of the reasons for that and how the, the economics works. Yep. Well, um, here in Chile, we, we do get uh, most of the catalog, uh, maybe with some delay, probably one or two months. But the main issue is the price. For example, um, as we were say, uh, seeing the other day, uh, the, um, the Lego Friends uh, uh, Heart Lake Amusement Park uh, set that recently came out is $130 in the U.S. and here is $300. <laughs> <So> <laughs> that, of course, uh, a, an expensive toy makes it an even expensive toy. Right. For anyone who complains about the price of Lego in the U.S., don't come here. <laughs> yeah, that's been a conversation you sh uh, in the Kevin Hinkle show. Sometimes that they complain about the price, and I go like, "You really want to complain about price?" <laughs> so, and the other thing is the structures of the stores. Here in Santiago, we have about five or six uh, what were called mono brand stores. That means that they look like a Lego store, they smell like one, they sell Lego, but they're not like a Lego brand retail store that you will get in the U.S. That is, you don't get all the exclusives, the VIP points, the rare merchandise, uh, and all that. Um, back in uh, about for the past three years, they've been in the process of uh, being becoming a certified store which is something between the mono brand store and the Lego brand retail store, where you will get some, some of the stuff, but not everything. That could be, uh, for example, the build a minifigure or the pick a brick wall. Here in Santiago, we only have one, one of those stores are, is certified. Uh, that's the one uh, at Costanera Center building. And there, they only have the build a minifigure because it, it's so small, they can't have the pick a brick wall. In Valparaiso, there's the other certified store here in Santiago, and they do have the the pick a brick wall. I won't get into prices <laughs> then because I will recover that, but uh, we do have access to that, but very, uh, very few. <clears throat> then, um, so when you start building larger mocks, then when you need larger uh, large quantities of a certain brick, it, it's a, it's a challenge to uh, to get them. We mostly use the BrickLink, so we order bricks through BrickLink. But the thing is, since we're at the end of the world here, in a good day, you'll get your bricks in about three weeks, but usually you'll get them in two or three months period. So yes, when you're building something and you order the bricks, you had the idea and you actually, actually get them, it's been so long that you probably change your idea, change your mind, or start building something else, or just don't remember what you bought. So that, in that case, it's very useful for us to have a log because we have a very good communication. We're very good friends with each other. So if we're building something and we need, I don't know, a couple of bricks, uh, specific bricks, we somehow manage to get them through our, our small network. But when you're building like a huge building and you need 2,000 bricks, uh, you just can't. So it's very challenging. So through the lug then you're able to, to use like lug bulk programs and things like that that really help bring in a lot of bricks to some place like Chile that it's difficult to go out and just buy a lot of sets. Yeah. I was skipping the lug bulk since uh, I, uh, I've heard that the first rule about lug bulk is not talking about lug bulk, but <laughs> since you mentioned it, <laughs> yes, lug bulk has been a great opportunity. Uh, thankfully, uh, thankful when Kevin Hinkle was uh, our community manager, he did manage to get it here. So we have had it for the past four or five years. Uh, I don't recall exactly. And that's been very, very helpful. Yeah, that's that's really great. So going back to, to our discussion of the price of sets, um, if you if you know this, and I'm sure it's very complex for the reasons for all of that, but what would be some of the reasons why Lego would be more expensive in a country like Chile or, or other countries in Latin America? Well, one thing is the tax. 
That's uh, we have a 20% tax, 19%. So when we compare prices, we usually just see the um, the raw price, if you uh, may, in the U.S. That's before tax. So okay, if I want to be strictly fair, the set I just mentioned is not $130, but probably $140 uh, if you add the tax versus one uh, $300. So still not a great ratio. <laughs> yeah. So it's around the uh, double the price. Hmm? Sometimes we get better deals and not so expensive. And since our market is much smaller and much slower, after a while, since they don't sell at the original price uh, or the starting price, they will drop down a, a bit uh, and, may, uh, and you might end up buying it somewhere near the American price. But that's when the set is already one year old or something. The good thing is that since some things sit for a while in our stores, sometimes uh, some products get retired on America <laughs> and they start raising the price on uh, eBay. Uh, you can still buy it at the store price here. So uh, <laughs> maybe that's a uh, balance or something. And you're like playing the secondary market in the U.S. and trying to buy it here. And yeah, and, uh, I don't know if it's um, uh, actually uh, a business to buy here and ship it there. I don't know. Then uh, it's also the the shipping thing. Then um, up to recently, um, how the the structure of the rep representative of Lego here, the the license is was owned by a Colombian company and the Chilean company that um, and that sell uh, uh, Lego had to buy to the Colombian company that bought to the American uh, Lego office. So everyone wants a piece of the cake. So of course. As customers end up eating just the the whipped cream of the cake, <laughs> the customer is the one that loses out in that chain. Yeah, you just eat the the cake without frosting. <laughs> but now they lost the um, the Chilean representative, so the Colombian company is working directly here in Chile. So supposedly prices should drop a bit. I haven't seen that yet. We hope uh, it happens somehow uh, sometime in the near future. Do prices change depending on a theme? For instance, maybe like Disney or, or an IP-based theme. Is that less expensive, more expensive here? Maybe do you get closer prices to the U.S. if it's something like City? Or, or is it pretty much the same across the board? Mm, it's And there's no rule about it. Uh, normally, sometimes uh, City sets or friend sets may be cheaper. But sometimes you get uh, some uh, uh, no IP sets really, really expensive and it really uh, doesn't make uh, much, much sense. So um, I don't know. <laughs> there, uh, there's no like a straight line comparison saying that if uh, for every dollar it costs much. No, sometimes it's three times, sometimes it's two, or sometimes it's really close to the, uh, the American price. We have to be fair though. The American market is the most competitive market in the world. So the American price is the lowest Lego price in the whole world. If you compare it to Europe, it's also cheaper. So, But it's just to, uh, to make a comparison. Yeah, that's a good explanation, though, for kind of why prices are so different. I think there's a lot of different things that play into that. But hopefully in the future, as you know, Lego becomes more popular uh, here in Latin America, then you'd see prices start to go down as well. But I also wanted to cover the lugs that are present here, both in Chile and in other countries. So if you can talk about maybe start with Chile and kind of how the lugs work here and then where the other kind of hubs of Lego fans maybe are, are mostly based. Sure. Um, we uh, Well, the first lug to be uh, recognized was the, the one in Brazil. But since they speak Portuguese, we don't talk that, that much. There's no, uh, uh, we have some friends from over there, but we don't uh, really uh, communicate much, uh, as if in the other Spanish-speaking uh, Spanish-speaking -speak countries. Uh, we had our log recognized uh, a while back, and there's another log here in Chile, uh, in Concepcion, which, which is a city down to the south, uh, about a, a seven-hour drive or so. Uh, that's console lug. So we have Chile lug, console lug, and we have uh, three just uh, registered Lego fan medias here in Chile. Uh, the one I run, which is R Bricks. You can find it on YouTube. There's a blog, which is run by the guys uh, in Concepcion, uh, which is called Revista Bricks in Bits. 
And there's a new recognized uh, RLFM, uh, which is Bricks in Chile, run by my friend Gary Ramos. He's from Venezuela, but he's living right now for a couple of years here in Chile. That's impressive with the number of Lego fans in Chile that you've got three <laughs> recognized uh, fan media. And so for people who maybe aren't familiar, you know, watching this video, aren't familiar with that term and kind of what a, a recognized log or a recognized fan media is, maybe briefly explain that and kind of what that relationship is like with Lego. Yep. Well, um, Lego has a unique way to uh, um, relate to their fans in ways that uh, you have uh, clubs for every hobby, like Hot Wheels, uh, Masters of the Universe, Power Rangers, whatever. But Lego goes a, a step forward and reaches those fans and recognizes them after some certain um, qualifications, or uh, you may. And, and they support those fans, uh, sending some stuff and, and helping them communicate through the Lego Ambassador Network uh, so they can reach out. So things like this happen. You guys come to Chile and you reach out, uh, easily can reach out to Lego fans and get in contact with them. And we're all friends. So it's a, it's a great way and Lego help us do that. Yeah, one of my favorite things about the Lego Ambassador Network is that ability to communicate with other ambassadors from LUGS or any any organization out there. It's also really great. I'll, I'll take this moment just to mention for everyone watching, there's a, a calendar on there. So we get emailed, a lot of people email us questions on like, is there a show in my area or when is the show happening? And so if you go to the, the Lego Ambassador Network online, we'll put a link to that in the description of this video. You can actually find a calendar and a map with lists uh, where all of the LUGS are as well as where the events are. And so if you're wondering how to kind of get more involved or is there a show or a lug I can join, then that's a really good resource as well. We, uh, we always have um, at least one large uh, Lego theme uh, show uh, during the year and some small expositions during the year. Um, and also we uh, participate in things like Comic-Con um, or shows like that. The, the guys in Argentina recently had a, a huge show that was very success, successful uh, down um, in Bariloche or nearby. The guys in Peru always have some uh, their shows too. They recently had uh, their uh, Lima Breakfast, which was awesome. We, we were actually just yeah. there, so we'll have, uh, have videos coming soon from, from that show as well. So yeah, that's uh, that show. And then uh, we were at, in Panama last year, the two shows we've covered in Latin America so far. So if people are wanting to see kind of an example of mocks and that sort of thing, we have some of that. And the show's in Brazil, which is in, uh, somewhere in, uh, in November. And well, if you go up north uh, on Colombia, they also have shows in Mexico. My friend uh, Alfonso, uh, he used to live here in Chile. And when he moved back to, back to Mexico, he was like, I missed you guys. I missed the lug. Uh, I told him, then go make your own lug. <laughs> and he started contacting people. And now they have a, a really nice lug over there. And uh, that's really cool. So and we, and we know we have friends throughout the whole continent that have the same passion. And it's easily to just uh, contact them. So you just go, hey, I'm a Lego fan. I know you're a Lego fan. And you just start talking. And, and that's pr pretty cool. It's another way to connect, not right. just bricks. No, that's fantastic. Because I know you mentioned there's kind of the language barrier with a country like Brazil. Yeah. But uh, besides that, is it pretty frequent that you'll kind of reach out to, to other countries' lugs or other Lego fans uh, you know, within Latin America and try to go to their shows when possible? Yeah, when possible. And we always try to keep in touch and at least uh, tell each other we're having this, uh, this event, if you can come or someone can come. Uh, for instance, for the Lima Breakfast, uh, one of our guys from uh, our log went there, Carlos, and that's a great way because uh, we contact them. I know Daniel from um, uh, Peru, uh, Log Peru, helped him out with uh, um, uh, uh, bedding and yeah. uh, housing. Uh, housing, yep. So that's uh, that way we can all help it out each other and um, become like one big Lego family. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be great to see more shows starting to pop up yeah. in different countries. Where where do you see Lego becoming more popular at the moment in Latin America? There's some countries where it's really just kind of starting to take off and where there maybe five years ago wasn't much of a presence at all? Um, I think it's pretty even. 
Uh, here in Santiago, we have lots of Lego stores. We, we sell lots of Lego. We buy lots of Lego. <clears throat> uh, in Argentina, they don't have Lego stores, but the guys that are having their, their log, which was recognized last year, I believe, uh, are very motivated and are making really good shows. So I think things are starting to heat up and, uh, and move around here. So hopefully... Uh, I'll be able to move around and, and shoot some of those shows and pro maybe share with you guys whatever I, I can shoot. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great to, to see more from the shows. So is it very easy then for, for Latin American AFALs to get out to other shows, maybe in Europe or the US, or what are kind of some of the barriers to entry there of sort of fans mixing more internationally? Well, uh, traveling to the U.S. or even more to Europe is not as easy because uh, it's always at least one day trip going and one day back. And it is expensive, so it's not as easily as to move as, as if you will take a, a local flight or maybe a train or a bus or something or just drive to there, right? But we can, <clears throat> we've been doing that. Um, something we also do... Uh, I try to go into the States at least once a year, so I buy most of my stuff over there. That helps me save. <laughs> As I tell my wife, it's not how much I'm wasting, it's how much I'm saving. <laughs> Don't think about what you spend, it's all the money you save. <laughs> it's about the money I'm saving, so that's uh, being positive. And hopefully I'll be able to go to uh, one of those brick, uh, uh, maybe a brick world or one of the brick, uh, brick shows uh, over in the States. One, one thing we've noticed with some of the, the smaller shows in Latin America uh, so far that we've been able to visit is I think when, when shows are just starting out, there tends to be uh, more of an emphasis on maybe displaying sets in some cases, and it's harder to get people bringing those mocks in. So is that something you found as well? And how, how have you found these kind of ways that you can encourage builders to not only bring sets that they bought, but actually you know start building custom creations themselves upon display? Well, uh, I think that's, uh, that takes time. Uh, for instance, when we were planning our first, uh, first breakfast about five or six years ago, uh, some of the guys were saying, like, we, we should only take mocks. I was like, if we only take mocks, we'll have like two or three people here. So <laughs> there's probably not a good idea because uh, since the, there aren't many shows, people don't actually know that they can build more than just a set. So we get, uh, we have lots of collectors and not some, uh, so many uh, mock builders, but we do have some really good mock builders. For example, um, uh, last year at the Lego house, uh, one of our guys from our log had uh, had on display the first year. Uh, one of our guys had on display uh, some uh, some uh, some mocks, and on the second round, the second year, four of our guys had uh, displayed on uh, displays on the Lego house. So that says something very powerful. Uh, also, Luis, uh, who is from our log too, uh, he uh, he reached. The 10,000 uh, boats on Lego Ideas a while ago with the HMS Beagle. Now he's running with another project, the uh, Alma Satellite uh, Station, the, um, the, that's the observatory that took the black hole picture at the beginning of the year. So it's pretty cool. And that's pr that project is doing really well. And our friend from Luke Peru, Aldrin Aguilar, just hit the 10,000 milestone with his uh, Waskar boat. I won't say anything else because I know you already have a video about it. So no spoilers, just in case this video pops first uh, than the other. So but uh, so we're really proud of that. We're, uh, we're getting there. And we know we have very good builders, a uh, lot of potential. And yeah, we have to uh, face some hurdles like uh, the fact not having a pick a brick wall and not being able to buy a Lego that easily. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I think another hurdle that's that's hard to understand unless people have actually traveled here in uh, like South America in particular, it's just the distances between cities and everything. You know, it's not not like in the U.S. where you kind of hop in a car and drive somewhere pretty easily. Basically, you have to fly between almost everywhere because it's just so big. Yep. Then uh, and that's uh, you have to fly. And then if you drive your car and put your mock in the car, it's much easier to carry than getting on a plane. <laughs> and when you reach your destination, start building all over because you only got brakes back. So yeah, that's uh, that's also uh, something you have to manage. But that's 
true also when you're thinking about huge mocks because impressive mocks doesn't have to be huge mocks. So, and uh, in a small uh, uh, size mocks, I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I think that, I think commonly, and even I mean, we a lot of the stuff we feature is really big uh, as well. But there certainly are a lot of great small builds on display at conventions, and you don't always have to build you know something the size of this room uh, to have it on display. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. Okay, so when you're in a huge uh, show, obviously the large stuff is what catches your your attention. But and, and when you take your time and you, uh, you look around, sometimes you see a, like a small size, and I'm not talking three pieces of mocks, nah, just a regular size. It's pretty, it could be pretty uh, impressive. What is something you'd maybe like uh, either other Lego fans or maybe the Lego company themselves uh, to be aware of maybe that's that with Lego in, in Latin America or maybe any message you'd like to give them or, or kind of, you know, support you're looking in, in the future that you'd like to see uh, as Lego continues to grow in this part of the world? Well, of course, we'll like the, a direct presence of the, of the brand of Lego here rather than that through a, a certified store or a... Um, or a representative, right? Like a franchise representative, uh, because we'll get <clears throat> the whole deal: VIP points, pick a brick, uh, all the uh, promotions, uh, rare minifigures, the monthly bills, all the fun little perks. Yeah, all the fun little parts that you, uh, if you want them, you have to uh, like pay extra for uh, uh, through eBay or Bricklink. So that will be uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, hopefully we would see more of that coming in the future. As you said, you know, the brain kind of continues to grow here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that hopefully, and that would be uh, great. And, and well, and uh, on a second milestone will be uh, to get a, a, like a Legoland park in South America. So you don't have to, uh, the closest one is the one in Orlando. So it's actually quite a trip. So, uh, and if you go to Orlando, you get to go to Disneyland, Epcot Center, Universal. So it's <laughs> like 10 parks. So <laughs> it's quite an expensive trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Because you can't stop at just one. So, yeah, so <laughs> you've got to get the Lego land down here. <laughs> get them all. So it will be nice to have, uh, well, of course, it will be nice just to have one in Chile or maybe one in Brazil or somewhere that we can actually uh, be closer to and just go for maybe just a weekend or a long weekend or just uh, through winter vacations or whatever. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. So I also wanted to ask you then about your own uh, YouTube channel, which I believe you do. Are all of your videos in Spanish on there? Yeah, I've tried um, uh, doing some videos in English. Uh, it's fun. But uh, since I realized that uh, there's a, a, a community of Spanish-speaking uh, AFOLs that don't speak much English, I need to reach to them. Uh, and there's plenty of, uh, of material in English, uh, really good material. So I don't think uh, I will be adding something and really, uh, I, I wouldn't be adding much. But uh, maybe, yeah, if, if I do videos about shows around here, that could be something. But uh, like uh, doing a video review of uh, Lego said that you can just go into YouTube and see 20 other reviews. Uh, it's just one more. But in Spanish, it's like the one video review. So I think that's that's something important that I have to do at the moment. Right. I think that's a really unique angle that you can take is opening it up to how, however many millions of Spanish speakers there are around the world, there's a lot of people that speak Spanish, and I think they're certainly looking for that that Lego content as well. So is it mostly set reviews that you do, or if people kind of looking for other types of content, what what types of videos do you post there? I mostly do video reviews. Uh, sometimes I build online. Uh, we just talk about stuff. Uh, sometimes I I may do a video about certain, certain building techniques. For example, once I did uh, a video about uh, those uh, mosaics that look uh, one thing from one side and uh, uh, another from the other. Oh, like lenticular mosaics. Lenticular mosaics, right? So um, may, uh, sometimes I, I talk about uh, all these extended line products of Lego that you don't get here, but you can, when I go to the States, I always purchase like umbrellas, towels, uh, watches, clocks, etc. And since people don't know that they, they, they exist, they don't look for them online. So once they see it, they exist, they can at least look for them on eBay or Bricklink. 
Yeah. So so definitely go check that out. Anyone watching, if you're looking for that type of content, particularly in Spanish, we'll make sure to put a link to Christian's channel in the description. I think that's really great that you're kind of providing a different resource, like you said, and not just kind of treading the same water in English that everyone else is already doing. So uh, another thing that I thought of that I think would be really interesting to see in kind of Latin America would be maybe some unique sets from this part of the world. We saw with like the Chinese New Year sets that they released kind of targeting that Asian market. Is that something that you ever see happening with Lego here in Latin America, kind of unique sets that reflect this culture? Well, um, of course, I would love to see that. I think it's hard since the market might be a, a little too small. And I don't know if uh, if you run the numbers, if if it is interesting enough for for Lego not to uh, to throw a set like that. For example, there was this uh, Machu Picchu architecture idea set that reached the ten thousand milestone, but it didn't went through the review. The Mexico City <clears throat> um, idea set also happened the same thing. So let's see how the Aldrin's Waskar ship does. Uh, but probably uh, those kind of sets won't sell worldwide. So I don't know. The, uh, at the end of the day, it's a company, no? Yeah, they are <laughs> trying to make money. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the struggle there is there might not be a wide enough audience for, for some of these things. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, back uh, a couple of years ago in uh, during the uh, Brazilian Olympics, there was a, a, a set regarding the mascots of the of the events that was old only in Rio. So, and I think the, some people from around the world tried to uh, to get it because it was uh, a nice novelty uh, to collect. But I don't know if we'll see other sets like that. For example, the <clears throat> the Santiago Tower, which is the tallest building in Latin America, would be an awesome architecture building. Yeah, no, it'd be it'd be a really great, impressive uh, architecture building as well. But this has been really great, Christian. Thank you so much for giving us this kind of added insight into the Lego community here in Latin America and, and Chile itself as well. So if people want to check out uh, more of your work, we've, we've talked about the YouTube channel. Uh, where all where all should they find that online? Uh, well, on YouTube, you can find me as Rbricks, and you can follow me on Instagram as Chris underscore and Brickbauer. <clears throat> And or I uh, through um, through Facebook, I have a fan page also called Artbreaks. So those are my main social media. Well, there we go. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoyed watching and learning more about uh, kind of a different part of the Lego community here in Latin America. We'll have links to those different sites in the description as always. So you can check all of those out. And thank you so much for watching.